Okay, so the first question we have here is on integration. So the first one says evaluate um, evaluate the integral the integral of pi over two. So the upper limit is pi over two, the lower limit is zero. Then we have x sine x dx. So this is a very simple question. You can either use, um, okay, there are many methods that you can use to solve this. And I'm going to use the simplest, which is using integration by parts. So according to integration by parts, the formula is, um, the integral, okay, let me write it here. I'll just demarcate. So the integral of u dv is equal to uv minus the integral of v du. This is what it is. But how do you choose which one is u, which one is v? So we use a mnemonic word, which we, which we call liet. So here we have the L here stands for logarithmic functions. I stands for uh, indices. And then this one stands for algebra, then trigonometrical function, and then we have exponential function. So we are going to check which one comes first in this, uh, ex uh, in this expression. So, so in this expression, we have a trig function and an algebraic function. So which one comes first in this uh, in this mnemonic word? So we have algebra coming earlier than trig. So algebra is the one that we're going to choose as our u. So we say, let u be equal to x. So immediately after doing this, we can even find what du dx is. So when you differentiate this, the answer should give you one. Then when you cross multiply, you have du being equal to what? dx, okay. So we can now plug everything into, I mean, the remaining part here, this part is the one that we're going to call dv. So dv is therefore going to be sine x dx. So I'm going to, I mean, integrate both sides in order to get the, the value for v because in this expression, we only have u. Now we want to get v here and v can only be get, gotten by integrating the V. So V, when you integrate the V here, V is, will therefore be equal to the integral of sine X with respect to X is, um, so when you integrate sine X, you get um, negative cos X. Okay. The derivative of sine x gives you cos x. So meaning when you integrate sine x, you get negative cos x. Okay. So this is what we have as our v. So now it's just a matter of us replacing what we have in the expression for integration by parts. So how do you replace? So I'm going to have the value of u there, I would say u is equal to what? X. Then V will have found it to be negative cos X. Then we say minus the value of V there is negative cos X. So say the integral of negative cos X. And then du in this case is equal to dx. So what is du I can replace with dx. So when you simplify this, you have negative x cos x. And then this negative and that negative will cancel. You have a positive here. And then you have the integral of cos x dx. So from there, the next thing that you need to do is, so we copy this, we have negative x cos x. Then the integral of cos x gives you what? So when you integrate cos x, you are getting sine. So we have plus 
sine x. So since this is an indefinite, oh, this is a definite integral because it has limits. We have the upper limit and the lower limit. So we can, as we are solving here, we can put in the limits. We have pi over two, zero this side. We have pi over two, zero. So even there we do the same, we have pi over two, then zero. So we put the upper limit first. So the upper limit will be, what is x we put with, we replace with pi over two. So we have negative pi over two, cos pi over two, then we have plus sine pi over two. So pi over two is just the same as 90. Then when you replace the upper limit there, we can say minus, we replace the expression with the lower limit. So when you put zero there, we have negative zero cos zero plus sine zero. So sine zero is simply zero and zero times cos zero, the answer is zero. So this part gives us a zero. So just remain with this part. So when you simplify this part, we get negative pi over two. And then what is cos pi over two? So what is cos 90? So cos 90, cos 90 is zero. And then we have sine 90, which is one. So sine 90 is one. So pi negative pi over two times zero, that's zero plus one, the answer is one. So the integral here will just give us one as the solution. I don't know if you people have any questions. Okay. So let's move on to the second part. The second part is asking us to integrate three x. This one is an indefinite integral, meaning after integrate, we need to put k at the end, two plus x, then one minus x, then we have dx. So uh, integrating this part is simple, but this part is not as simple as you think because this is um, this is a partial fraction. So the first thing that you need to do to integrate this expression, you need to express it in um, its partial fraction. So let's do that. So we have two x over x plus x. I mean two plus x and one minus x. So this can be written as a over two plus, because these are factors. Let me say plus b over one minus x. So, um, the next thing that we need to do here is to find the common denominator. So when you find the common denominator, this side we have two x, two plus x, one minus x. So the common denominator this side is exactly what we have on the left, which is two plus x, then one minus x. So when you say this into that, it's one minus x times a, we have a there, one minus x, then one minus x into one minus x times two plus x, you get two plus x times b. So you have plus b times two plus x. So you discover that this part and that part will cancel when you cross multiply and divide by that same part. So we we'll just remain with two x being equal to a open brackets one minus x and plus b uh, two plus x. So the next thing that you need to do here after doing this is to find what the value of a and b are. So this one is straightforward. 
we first have to check if there's anything that we can make a zero in this expression. And when you check, this part can be made a zero, even this, this other one. So if we, if, we want to part, if we want to make this part a zero, we simply just have to in, introduce one while there is X here so that we have one minus one and it gives us a zero. So we have two, okay, let me just say, let X be equal to one. So meaning two, while there's X, I'm going to put one, and then this will be equal to uh, A times one minus, while there's X, I'm putting one, then you say plus B, two plus one. So this part to give us a zero, zero times A, the answer will be a zero here. So this side, two times one, we have two being equal to B, we have two plus one, that is a three. So we have three B, divide by three, divide by three, meaning the value of B is equal to uh, two over three. So after finding B, we can also find A by making this part a zero. How do we make this part a zero? We make X uh, be equal to negative two. So when you put negative two where there's X here, this part becomes a zero. When you put negative two where there's X there, we're going to have, okay, let's start with this side. We put negative two there. So you're going to have negative two times two, oh, sorry, two positive two times negative two being equal to a times one minus negative two. So this side you have negative four as the solution. And then on the other side, you have one plus two that will give us three times a. Then we divide by three, divide by three, meaning the value of a becomes what? Um, negative four over three. So now after doing this, we can replace back the value of A and B there. So the value of A is negative four over three. The value of B is uh, two over three. So this is what we need to do to, for this to, uh, I mean, to resolve this part, into, to, to resolve the fraction or the rational fraction, the rational function into its partial fraction. So now after doing this, this is now the right time for us to integrate. Cause the question is now easy. Okay. Okay. So now we can write the expression as the integral of three X plus the integral of this part here. This is negative three, negative four over three over two plus X. The X of course, the X of course, plus the integral of this part, which is two over three over one minus x dx. So when you do the integration, this part will give you what? Three x squared over two. We're just doing normal integration here. When you integrate this part, the denominator there is a linear function, meaning we'll have a negative four over three, lean, open the absolute value symbol brackets. You do that. Then even this one, the denominator is a linear function. So we do the same. So we say plus uh, uh, two over three, lean, open brackets, one minus X. Because it's an indefinite, um, uh, it's an indefinite um, integration, we say plus K. So that's what, that's what you are required to do. Okay, so now let us see how best we can solve part three, how we can integrate part three. So part three there is simple as well. So we have the integral of uh, one minus four, oh, sorry, one minus X, everything over the root of X. 
the x. So this one is simple. What you can just do is to separate those. So if you separate them, you're going to have four there, zero. You're going to have one over the root of x minus x over the root of x, the x. So from there, you can simplify this expression. So this one can also be written as one over x to the power one over two. Yeah, so which can further be written as um, x to the power negative one over two. And then the second part there is going to be x over x to the power one over two. So when, you, when you're dividing two indices with the same base, you subtract the powers. So when you subtract one minus, uh, one minus half, um, this one here minus the half that is down there, the answer that you're going to get will still be half. So what this means is that this part can also just be written as x to the power half, then dx. Having done this, we can now integrate because this one is straightforward. So integrating this is going to be simple. The integral of uh, this part to be, um, the integral of the first part here is going to be, um, when you integrate x to the power negative half, you get x to the power half because you add one to, um, you add one to negative half, which will give you positive half. Then you divide everything by the new power the new power is positive half. So when you divide everything by half, that's what you're going to have. And then you say minus, integrate this part, you add one to, to half. So meaning you're going to have three over two as the answer. So you have X to the power three over two divided by three over two. Yeah, so this is what we have. And then you put the limits there. So the limits are four and uh, zero. So when you simplify this, this can be written as two x to the power half and um, minus uh, two over three x to the power three over two. So the limits are four and zero. So putting in the limits, you start with putting in four. So when you put four, this x, you're going to have two root four minus, because anything raised to the power half is the same as the root of that. And then minus two over three root four to the power three minus when you put zeros there, you get zeros because the lower limit is zero. So there's no need for us to even put it that side. So let us just simplify what we have. So simplifying this, this part will give us the square root of four is two, two times two, this will give us four. Say minus the square root of four is two, two to the power three is eight, eight times two, the answer is 16, and then we say over three. So simplifying this fraction, uh, you get something like this, uh, negative um, four over three, something like that. Yeah, so this is going to be the final solution for this integral. Okay, let's join using the same link so that we proceed because we're in the last one minute. 